Hello and welcome to another Arshan XP online webinar course. Today we are going to talk about kitchen design. Uh, my name is Zoltan Tool. I'm working for Arshan XP. I'm the partner manager and I'm also a CAD and modeling enthusiast. So I love creating things. I'm not only going to show you today how to create a very simple kitchen design, I'm also going to tell you some tips, tricks and shortcuts you can be using during your, your workflow. As always, if you have any questions, you can ask it on the right hand side or below the, the video in the chat bar and I'll do my best to answer that. So just a quick refresher. This is the, um, I think the fourth course of our webinar series. Last time we talked about bathroom design, which was all about tiling and quantity takeoffs and consignations. And today is all about uh, kitchen design. Before we get to the topic today, let me just remind you that if you go to the website that we have, archanxp.com slash webinars, then you can see all the upcoming shows with downloadable content. So the, the course that I'm going to do today can be downloaded from here, from the webinar files. And if you want to follow along, we have a very comprehensive PDF guide, which you can download from the website from here. So if you want to go back to earlier episodes, we looked at uh, a reception room, the basics of cat drawing and bathroom design, then this is the way to go. And if you want to check our upcoming shows, then uh, you can check them out here. And if you're looking for more like architecture related content, then you can just scroll down and you can find the same thing over here. So uh, like I mentioned, today is all going to be about uh, kitchen design. This is what we are hoping to create. We are not going to do rendering at this time, but the kitchen cabinetry is the thing that we are going to create today. So we are going to investigate how to create the cabinetry, the worktops, and how to get the result that you see on the screen. So uh, let's look at the project that we have right now. And that is the end result. Obviously, that's not where we are starting. But I just wanted to show you, this is a project that was sent to us by one of our uh, users, actually an Archline trainer as well. And uh, she created this, bath uh, this uh, kitchen design. And that is what we are hoping to recreate. If you have already downloaded the content, you don't have to follow along right now. But if you if you have downloaded it, then just go to the file manager and open up the starting uh, sort of position. If you have any projects that you opened up before in Archline, you can find it among uh, file, uh, new project and here in this uh, recent project jump list. If you don't have that, you just go with the uh, open project and just browse to the folder where you want to go. And here you can open up the starting position. Now the starting position is uh, is the room itself without any cabinetry. So that's what we are hoping to uh, to recreate now. Now, when we talk about um, sort of kitchen design, uh, the most important thing that we have to understand that we want to create elements and objects which are fully parametric. Parametric, what does that even mean? That means that you can, uh, you can resize these elements, you can open the the drawers, you can open the doors, and you can sort of treat the objects like they were actual real world cabinetry. So that's what we are hoping to, to get. Last time I showed you how to download content from other sources like the 3D warehouse, but today we are going to do things from scratch by ourselves. So this is the most exciting part when we are actually modeling. Uh, on the 2D, you can see orange uh, guiding line, lines. This is where we are going to position the cabinetry, but how do we create the cabinets? Well, there's a tool for that. It's under interior, KBB, and cabinet. Now, when you click on that, this cabinet maker appears and we start with a very basic like box-like cabinet. It has its own default sizes, but we all have to uh, change and override that. Now, I see one issue over here, namely that my software is currently in meters. However, the guide, uh, the course guide is in millimeters. I intentionally did this because then I can show you how to change the software into millimeters. You can do it in the property bar and go to uh, units and angles. And here you go with millimeters. And from now on, we are in millimeters. So let's go back to the cabinet maker and create a cabinet which is which suits our purposes. Uh, we have many, many tabs over here. I'm going to go over them one by one and meanwhile, I'm going to create the cabinet. So we start with the first tab. The first tab is uh, is all about the sizes. So we have to define the size of this cabinet, the width. We know for a fact it's going to be, um, yeah, we are going to leave it as it is. The depth should be 550 millimeters. Total height, carcass height and space for legs. These three are sort of in connection with each other because they are, these two give out the total height. So how do we navigate around this thing? First of all, we are going to say that the space for legs, we are just going to unlock this value for a second and we are just going to make it 100 millimeters. And once we did that, 
uh, the rest of the values change so the car uh, carcass height should be 760 and now the total height is changed the total is 860 so that's fine uh, by us so uh, I think we are done with the basic sizes next thing what we have to decide is the panel itself so what would be the material for the sides and the material for the front and that's what we are deciding in the second tab which is about the it's called general unit door properties so let's start with the door uh, make sure that this selector is activated so that way you can decide which which front you want to use and the one we are going to use it's called the anthracite um, something if we don't find it here then we just go to this plus icon and go to the object library and look for uh, anthracite panel here we go so just hit ok from now on it's going to be in the favorites so let's just uh, let's just activate it and then we have to decide on the handle itself so the handle is on the second part uh, interestingly nothing has been created here so I'm wondering why there's no door over here that is because it's going to come at a later stage so this is where we set up the defaults so let's go to the handle and for the handle we are looking for a very simple one this bar handle that is fine so we are not going to change that um, and then we move on to the side panels now the side panels are these things so we have to decide what kind of panels we want to use this side corpus panel the white one the basic one that's going to be good for our purposes uh, but there's a, uh, a back panel now if you are a furniture designer you know that for the back panel you don't have to get too fancy so we don't want to waste money and material with this thing we just want to keep it very simple so how do we select the back panel we do it with this selector over here so click on this for the back panel and disable the use side panel settings for back panel uh, switch because otherwise it's going to be the same panel for our sizes or sides i mean disable that and let's look for something else this corpus back panel would be fine and then you see that this very simplified uh, maybe even thinner panel is applied so that's how you can get the actual results now the top is something that we have to figure out too because we are going to have a countertop over here so we don't want to have a full panel maybe something which goes under the sink like this top corpus panel is like that okay so this is getting getting together and now is the time to actually look at the the door I mean by I'm just checking back on the on the chat bar to see if there are any questions I see that there are so that's good and uh, I'm going to talk about them as well at the end so let's talk about the the door which is we are jumping over a few options we are jumping right over here and we have to decide that we want to have a door which is left to right or up and down flipper or maybe a fixed door or a two-sided uh, sliding we are going with this left or right and we want to make sure that the door is covering the whole front so we are just going to click full overlay and it's going to open from right to left okay there's still no door so how come we have to check on this uh, check mark over here because once we do then the door is created okay so far so good there's a couple of things I don't really like and one of them is actually the um, the side panel so for that we have to make sure that we apply the default for all the sides um, the handle yeah the handle is the one that we have to figure out so we have to click on the third panel and the handle is not good here I want to put it up here and I want to stretch it for make running it from corner to corner so we do that by clicking on use custom position click on the top position now that the handle has jumped over here and click on the stretched to make sure that it covers the whole um, sort of width of this cabinet um, well we are not yet done because we have to define how we want this cabinet to look like in 2d so we go to general settings uh, and here we have to say that this is this is a simplified view that's not good I can't see the door over here because you know the door is an extra addition but I can't see it here so instead of a simplified view we are going to go with uh, with closed doors like that so now I think this is getting better if uh, you want to change the line weight and the color of the lines you can do that here I'm not going to change that now um, next because I you know I want to save this so I can use it some other time as well I'm going to use this cabinet and its variations many many times today so I'm just going to hit the this save button by the way it's always funny that the floppy disk is remaining as the default icon for saving I'm wondering what you know young people understand of this icon anymore but you know for me that was part of that was the first uh, 
data transmitter device I, I've seen in my life, I think back in 1995. That was just sort of an off topic. So uh, here are the devices or the uh, objects that you have created so far. Um, by clicking on the Save As button, you can now save this as an extra item. First, let's name it. Uh, I think the name should be Anthracite Base Cabin uh, Cabinet number one. Let me just see the spelling. Anthracite. That's that's fine. Um, the category. Well, uh, it should be kitchen because then you can find it easily. And the subcategory. Well, you don't have to define that, but if you want to find it easier, then you just type in something here. Base cabinets. Beam parameters. Very important if you're coming from. An environment where you would need to work together with other parties of the design process, you might want to add additional fields like price or item number. Here you can define that, but we are not doing that now. So let's just hit OK and hit OK again. And then the software is not going to discard the cabinet that we have just created. Instead, it asks me to place it. So let's just do that over the orange uh, helping line. So let me just move the mouse cursor to the corner once. And again, and again, and there should be two more. Another one here, another one there. And you see that when I do that, uh, things happen in the 3D as well. So when you create something, you might get used to the fact that the 3D would update automatically. So now I have five identical cabinets with identical tops. So the worktop should be coming up here. That's fine. Uh, well, this is not what we are hoping to achieve. You would need to have drawers, you would need to have a dishwasher maybe, so we have to customize these elements. And um, first what we have to do, th there's a kitchen corner over here. So this element is needed here, but its door is not needed. So how about instead of two, this two, I'm just going to get rid of this one, make this one larger, make it one door which is openable and the other one which is fixed, and then you have a very deep um, cabinet for all the large uh, pots and, and things like that. So we go back to the 2D, activate it, and we have to change the size of this cabinet. Uh, there are many ways to do it. You can go back to the properties and change it over here, but let me show you a shortcut. If you click on the furniture, you can click on the marker. And if you click on it, type in 900. I'm sorry, it's not 900, it's, it's 1200 because it's double sized. I hit enter, it's going to grow in size. Uh, let me just undo this and show you something really interesting. If you put uh, Ctrl Z or undo with this, then it's going to be undone. How did the software know that the furniture needs to go in this direction when I type in the bigger value? It's because of this arrow over here, because if I click on the arrow, I can define <clears throat> into which direction I want the furniture to grow. So if I click on this and I, I uh, push the arrow that direction, and if I type in 1200 here, then it's going to grow into the wall, which is not good. I just want to show you this real quick. So this is just a shortcut. Uh, another thing, once I have re um, recreated or resized this furniture, if I click on its size, I can move it back to its corner. So how you are going to change the size of your furniture pieces is entirely up to you. There are many ways, more than one to do the same thing as it so happens with modeling software. Next task, I have to divide this cabinet into two pieces, one with an openable door and another one with a fixed panel. So let's click on the element and go back to the properties. Uh, how do we get started? First, let's get rid of the door. Let's click on the door item and hit the X to delete the door. Next thing what we need is a, a vertical divider, which I can do in this tab over here. Uh, dividers can be vertical and horizontal, and they could be also um, division only without any shell. So if you if you want to have just a logical division between two sides, then you can do that. If you want to have like a physical barrier, then you can do that too. How do we define where I want this barrier? I think it should be 600 millimeters from the left. So if I type in 600, hit enter, then the divider is there. If I hit the, the check mark, division is created, but if I leave this division, then I won't be able to use this part because this is going to be sealed off. So I have to click on division only. And then the logical division is there, but the physical barrier is nowhere to be seen. Now, why is that important? That is important because now with the logical divisions, if I click on one of the fields, I can add doors on top of it. So let's do just that. So let's go to the door tab. Uh, left or right, and I think it should open from the left to the right. So I'm just going to hit the check mark. Oh, that's not good. Uh, right from left. That's that's the one. 
Uh, handle is not good. Again, I go with the handle, use custom position, top position, stretched. So, so far, so good. The other side, I click on it. This should be a, uh, a fixed panel, like that. Check mark, and it's created. So now we have one uh, item which has a fixed panel, which is not openable, and, and an openable one. So you can just, you know, open this and pack things up into this whole lot of storage uh, space. So I think now we have to save this too. Uh, what should be the uh, warning? If you click on save, it's going to override the previous one. So we have to go with save as, which allows us to give it another name. Uh, I think it should be a corner base cabinet. Uh, kitchen base cabinet, this is good. Again, beam parameters could be added if I wanted them, but I don't need them. Hit OK. OK again. And now the software has overridden the earlier one. Um, just just let's have, have some uh, fun with these elements. If I click on it, and if I go to the property grid, I can find the 3D representation. If I say uh, totally open, then it's like that. So you can look into that one. So that is the benefit of working with parametric elements because then you can open their doors and and you know use them. Maybe I should have had the, the door into the other direction. Let me know what you think in the comments. Maybe I should have changed that. Um, I'm just going to... Sorry, I'm just going to close it back back uh, on. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, let's proceed with the, I think uh, now what comes is the other side of the of the kitchen, or maybe I should have, I think drawers is what we need. Uh, imagine that we have one drawer and we have an oven above it. How is that done? Uh, that's an interesting question. So let's highlight the the element. Let me just uh, look into my uh, my schedule to see w which one of the elements should have the oven because I don't want to. Yeah, that's the one. So I want to override this cabinet now and I want to make certain changes with it. Namely, I want to have uh, one fixed or openable drawer here and I want to have an oven, an oven over there. So how do we do that? We first of all get rid of the door. We again don't need that. So click on door. The X deletes the door. So now comes the divider. Uh, there should be one horizontal divider with an actual shelf, and this should be 150 from the bottom. That's right. So now we have this element over there. And then we have to seal this off, which we do by clicking on this part and going to the drawer menu. And here I want to add the added drawer over here. I think one single drawer would be fine and uh, let's just create it so now we have one element um, and I think I don't need the the handle yeah that's the one so now we have one fixed panel it could be drawn out but if you want to just seal this off then that's the way to go uh, we have the other part and here we want to have a kitchen appliance which in this case is going to be an oven for that we have a dedicated tab over here appliances and you have two choices. You either use the content which is currently in our software or you could be downloading something else from 3D Warehouse or other places and use it as you want. Um, I'm going to use the former. I'm going to use, a, uh, use this blue cross to load up an item which is already in our software. Just click on this house to go back to the main uh, search area and start typing in the name of this oven which is uh, Mille, uh, come by my oven this is the one hit ok now by default these elements are uh, might not be in the right position this is scaled down so that's 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 not good a couple of things I have to customize uh, first of all first of all we have to make sure that the original item size is used because you know if this is an actual item but you can buy in the store then you want to make sure that this has the actual size so this is the the uh, toggle for that you might ask, what's the point in not using it? Well, if you are using custom made items, which might not be actual manufacturer things, but something that you have modeled, then you might want the software to scale it up or down. So this is where you can do if you're using actual sizes. Um, so far so good. Well, not really. This element is pushed inwards and it's, it's pushed up as well. So we have to compensate that with the three friends of ours, the three axes 
which are the the blue axis uh, for uh, vertical um, movement and the green and red ones for horizontal ones. So let's just do an offset from front to back. So if I type in minus 60 millimeters, then the oven is going to brought outside and I want to push it a bit downwards. So minus 10 would be fine. This is sometimes a guessing game. So you have to, you know, use the increments like that if you want to, to find the actual, the best position for that. But if you know the actual sizes, then add them as you, as you want. Um, you can save this. I'm not going to save it because I already have a copy of that. So I'm just going to hit okay. And now this element of mine is equipped with a, with an oven. So next time we are going to create, I think maybe an element with drawers. So that's what we are going to work on next. Meanwhile, I'm just looking at the question to see if there's anything. Yeah. Questions are coming in. That's just perfect. So going back to the, to the agenda, this cabinet over here is going to have, um, a couple of drawers, I think. So let's just go back to the pencil, open up the, the editing tab for this cabinet piece and click on the, the door item. And first of all, let's get rid of the door. That's, that's the first thing that we do, um, because we don't need a door anymore in this uh, context. So let's go with the drawers now and create mm, multiple, yeah, multiple drawers with the same front. That's, that's, I think it's fine. So how many drawers do we need? I think three would be enough. And when I say three, the software divides the, um, the distances equally. So recalculates and tells me that every drawer should be 241 millimeters uh, high. So if I click the check mark, then I have one drawer, which is actually hiding multiple within itself. So I think uh, we have to we have to change the handle that's as well, because I want to make sure that it looks the same. So I have now one item, which has multiple, um, multiple drawers, if I go into the 3d, click on the element, and I'm just going to open it, then I see what the result is. Uh, well, that's, that's fine. That's just perfect. But I want to have another element which has visible uh, drawers. So if I uh, click on the editor again, on the fifth element of my my row of cabinets, then uh, then I'm just going to go with the, the tool that I already know doors, I need to delete the door. And I go with the drawers. And this time I'm going to have multiple with front. Let's just first create it to see how they look like. And I know it has to be three items altogether. hit enter to update. And I know that the last distance, the last item is, is larger than the rest. So if I type in 400, then it would look like that. Um, and I think now what I need to do, go to handles, use custom handle, and they should be all stretched like that. So here we go. So that's how you create an item with, with multiple uh, drawers with, um, with ones which, you know, the, the bottom drawer is larger than the rest. Okay, we are we are getting there, but um, there are still things that we have to figure out. Uh, namely, we have three other elements here, but they are different in sizes. So what do we do? The best way to do it is I know for a fact that this element, this one on the far right, is similar to what comes here, but the size is different. So I'm just going to click on this element, pick it up, move a copy, move it up here. Then I'm just going to, let me just find it in the 3D. So I see it's facing the wrong direction. So I'm just going to move it, click on the element, move it 90 degrees and move it to its place. And I know for a fact that this element is larger. I, let me just go back to see its original size, which should be, um, the width should be 900. So if I click on this marker and I say this is 900, there you go. Okay, I have two other copies. So for that, I'm going to do another, another procedure. Um, so far I was dragging things from here and I was changing their properties over there, but that's not really what you want to do. You want to go to the design center and type in the name of the element that you want to use. Uh, let's go with this anthracite element and, uh, and use the base cabinet over here. What, ha what is happening if I uh, hover my mouse? What is happening is that the software by default would be placing the cab cabinet with uh, its door facing south. But if I move closer to the wall, the software is smart enough to snap the cabinet, rotate it inwards onto the wall. That is very, very handy. So click once, click twice. 
and now I have two other cabinets over there. So my kitchen is starting to, to look a lot like a kitchen and less like a bachelor pad. So let's just see what we have uh, investigating the 3D. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, pan uh, seven cabinets all together. Worktop is still missing and there should be some higher cabinets over there, but we are far from being done because um, let's say that I consulted with my, my client and the client says, I like this setup, this layout, but I want these panels to be white and this one should stay uh, grayish. So how do we override that? Well, for that, we have to understand what is uh, what, a, what a furniture panel actually is. Let's go to KBB and click on cabinet door. Now the name is a bit misleading because this could be used for creating different elements, for example. Um, maybe a cabinet door with a, with a glass inset, uh, rounded off corners. So uh, it could be, this tool could be used for many other things. Investigate our uh, furniture design workshops for more details on that one. And for now we are going to use them as they are meant to be used as cabinet doors. So first we have to decrease its size, I think 20 millimeters. Yeah, I think that's good. And uh, we have to define the material itself, which, which can be done here. So once we have clicked on the relevant part, we can find different materials for this item. What should be the best one? I think uh, this matte white uh, would be good. So I think that's, that's good. Uh, this is now a customized furniture panel, which I can again save in my, uh, my library by clicking on save as, and now giving it a name, let's uh, make it a workshop or webinar matte white front the category should be kitchen and the uh, subcategory I think cabinet doors and here now comes the interesting part I'm just going to hit OK uh, the software now asks me do you want to place this down I don't want that so I'm just going to hit escape to discard it or right click and go back to the object library by clicking on this house icon and look for the element you just created its name is uh, WS Matt White Front. Grab onto it and pull it towards the uh, the cabinet you want to change. Release it, and the software asks me, "Okay, what do you want to do with this? Do you want to use it as a, as a carcass top or use as leg, etc.? I'm going to use it as a front. If I click on it, the software overrides the current setup." with the new one. So this way you can easily change the cabinet front without changing any other properties. So that is very, very convenient. The next thing we have to add, we already created an oven. What about the dishwasher? I don't know about you, I hate doing the dishes. I always do that because according to my wife, I do the dishes perfectly, but I, that's what she should say if she wants to keep me doing that. So I need to have a dishwasher here, ASAP. So I'm just going to go to the design center, look for the device, and the name is white dishwasher. Grab onto it, move it towards the element into which you want to build it, release it, and now the software asks you, what do you want to do? Uh, I want to replace the unit with the same dimensions. And if I do that, the object is there, but the panel stayed. So even though the cabinet has been overridden with the, with the new element, the dishwasher, the element, the, the uh, panel, the front is still the same. Let's investigate what happened here. If I click on the element and I go to 3D representation and I open it, I see that I have a very nice dishwasher over here. So that is the, that, oh my, that was my purpose and dream to have one. So click, it, click on it again and close it back up. Okay, so now we have the devices that I, that I needed and I have the cabinets. Um, but I still have a couple of things missing. For example, the countertop is nowhere to be seen. So how do we create one? Let's activate the, three, uh, the 2D and move it to a comfortable position and go with KBB countertop. We have two choices. You either define the countertop via a uh, profile, which is like a polyline. I'm going to do that later. Or this time we are going to do it with the cabinets. So if I click on countertop by cabinets, all I have to do, I select the cabinets over which the countertop goes, like that. So I have one, two, three, I, it goes from here, it breaks here, and it goes all the way there. So if I hit enter, the software tells me, okay, here's, here is your countertop. So that's what I have created. Is it good enough? Well, not because we have to define it and customize it. First, let's start with the width. The width should be 600 millimeters, and the thickness is 40, that's good. Um, I think, there should be an end panel. 
and I thought well, I want to seal it off from the left. So I'm just going to say left side panel is created and its uh, length should be 900 millimeters. You might say that, uh, well, this is not good because the panel is overlapping the cabinet. I know that we are going to amend that a bit later on. The material should be changed. Uh, and I think that could be done here by clicking on plus and look for one which actually fits the mood of your design. I think um, maybe a walnut surface would be fine. I think this is good. Hit OK. And now the worktop is changed. Why do we have everything else in a sort of X-ray wireframe vision? That is because we cannot edit them yet. It's not the point. So this is just for showing you what are the elements under the worktop, but you are not able to edit it yet because now it's the worktop that you want to deal with. Uh, I think the next thing we should uh, we should be figuring out is the the cup itself. So how things are joined together. I'm going to go with join number two. This is especially important if you are working with marble elements because marble elements usually are not cut like that. They are try to be made as rectangular pieces. So if you want to change the, the cut, the joints, or maybe if you want, want to have no joint whatsoever, this is where you can do it. Let's go with joint number two. Uh, next, we have to figure out the sort of the splashbacks and these this, uh, noses over here. I don't want to have the splashback. So for, the, for this one, I'm going to disable it. So it's gone. And for the front one, I don't want to have that either. So I'm just going to take it off like that. Okay, so now it's getting getting in shape. Uh, let's just hit let's just hit close for now, and face the problem over here. Uh, this vibration that you see here is uh, is called in the modeling industry as Z phi. This happens when two solids or surfaces are occupying the very same space, which is in reality is impossible. So we need to move this countertop a little bit further away so these elements would not overlap. That we can do by going into the 2D, activating the countertop and seeing that it has uh, a back polyline, which if I click on it, I can extend it a bit. Uh, how far should I extend it? I think 40 millimeters would be fine because that is the thickness of the panel. So if I say 40 millimeters, then the problem, this bad vibration is now uh, solved. So that's just a quick reminder. If I click on the cabinet, I can, uh, I'm in the worktop, you can change how the profile or the path looks like. Let's jump back in and deal with other things mainly. Um, a, a kitchen sink because even though we have a dishwasher you might have you you need to have a kitchen sink. So let's go with the sink unit and here first you have to find the unit that you want to install. I think this uh, one basin version would be good. Let's just create it. Let's see where it is. Okay this is not the good position. So how do we offset it? with this two over here. So let's just say this is 940 millimeters from the left, hit enter, and then the element is created the way it's supposed to be. Uh, I think, well, you could be moving it along other axes as well, but this is not needed at this point. Let's go with a tap, make sure that you have water in this element. Um, well, which one should we use? Again, you could be using customized elements. For now, I'm going to use this Cutterman one. And it's already created. If you want to rotate it or you want to offset it that bit, you can do it like that. I think this is this is good. Let's go with the with the um, with the hob or or the oven. Now here's the problem. I want to create the the, uh, the cooker over here, but if I click on any of these things and if I hit the check mark, it's going to be put onto this panel. I, I want to have the other one. What do I do first? Let's get rid of this and click on the panel that you want to work on, like here. This is the part of the worktop I need. And let me just find the one that I need to use. Um, well, which one should be the good one? I think maybe an induction hub, uh, 580 times 510. I think that would fit, yes. Uh, let's just hit the check mark. You see now it's added to the right panel, but not the right position. So it should be, the uh, the cooker should be 1,500 uh, millimeters from this um, this side, so let's just add that. Okay, I think that's good. And the offset front to back, I think I want to move it back a bit, little bit. And this one is is fine. The yeah, maybe if I want to want to uh, want this kind of offset to be a little bit smaller, then I can just add five millimeters. And now it's being pushed further inside the the panel. So. 
what else do we do? I think we are done here, but before we hit OK and, and uh, use this, let's just go with save. Now, what what's happening if I save this? Uh, well, what actually happening is, is that the properties, sizes, width, height, material, and other elements would be saved as a style. So when you are going to use this counter top the next time, it's not that it's going to look exactly the same, its properties would look the same. So if you are mainly, you can, let's assume that you are working with one of your uh, co-designers who is creating, actually manufacturing countertops, then you can create a style of, of his or her typical work, and then you can use it as many times as you want. So let's just hit save as and name it. This time we are going to name it, uh, I think it should be something like uh, webinar countertop 001. Um, category should be kitchen and the subcategory should be countertop or worktop, whichever is, is better for you. So, okay, let's, let's hit okay. And now the countertop is created. So what else is left to do? Well, first of all, we have, we should have a tall unit over here and a bunch of smaller cabinets up there. So how do we achieve that? Well, we have the design center to thank for this, this kind of thing. So let's just go for the little house icon over here, delete the name, what is written here. That, that is the last thing that you were looking for. And uh, let's see what is in this anthracite uh, or anthracite family. Let's click on the object um, selector and we have a, quite a few things. So let's go with that one. This is a uh, cabinet with fridge. I think that is what we need. So let's just drag, drop, and sorry, I don't want to replace it. I want to use it like that. So let's just push it there. Yeah, nice. That's what exactly what I wanted. And uh, I want to have two additional things. I want to have another one on this corner. So I'm just going to go back to the same library, uh, tall cabinet, drag, drop, and drop it over there. It just takes a second for... Okay, the position is good, but the rotation is not. So let me just click on it and I can either rotate it in the 3D or if you are more fond of working in the 2D, then you can do that. Let me just, how should I rotate it? I should rotate to the left 90 degrees. And now I have to refine the position because this is not good. So let me just do it like that. And it's refined and it's in the right position. So what else is left to do? We need to have one uh, cabinet like this. So we need to have, so, so far what we have is this part is already here and that one is that one is done but this unit and that unit is not done yet so that is what we are creating next uh for this we have we have a unit in the library which is uh, i think it's called uh, anthracite uh wall cabinet like that so let me just drag drop it and drop it on them like that okay if this happens this is usually because of the, so the software is trying to do something with this cabinet maybe override an element which you already have so if you can't snap it to a corner, let's just, just position it wherever you want, click on it again, and, and then you can just uh, move it there. If, you, if the drawing is getting pretty dense and you can't find where to click for this cabinet, then go to the 3D, select the element, and that would select the element on the 2D as well. Similarly, if you click on anything in the 3D and you say show on floor plan, then not only it's going to be highlighted, also it's going to be selected. So now if I click on the corner point, I can move it and snap it where it needs to be. Okay, two things are missing. Uh, the two cabinets over here and a backsplash. For that, we are going to use, first of all, the uh, the wall cabinet. For that, I have to again look for the name. Uh, the name is wall cabinet opening upwards, this one. So let me just drag it and drop it over there. I just click for wait for a second. I think this is uh, now good. Perfect. Uh, last thing I need to do here is a backsplash. Sort of like, um, how should I call it? Should it be called a, a box or, or something? Uh, let me just show you an illustration. So this is what we are hoping to achieve. So kind of boxed in backsplash. And for that, well, in Archline, there are many things to do the same thing, or many, many ways to achieve the same result, but uh, it's always about which one is more, which one is easier, which one is faster. You, you, don't, you don't want to spend too much time on modeling. You want to be efficient. And for that reason, I'm showing you a shortcut for how to create this kind of boxed um, layout. And that you can do with the 
you might have guessed it, with the countertop. So how is that done? Well, first of all, you have to sketch where the countertop actually going to be. And that is when the, let's just go to the 2D, when the, um, the countertop with profile comes into the picture. So click on that and say that you want to have a countertop from here all the way to the, to the other side, here, like that. Hit enter. What did we end up with? Well, this is nothing good. So that is not what we wanted to achieve. But if I go to the to the um, to the floppy disk icon to the previously saved ones, if I click on the webinar countertop that I have saved, I see that now the countertop is replaced with the thing that I have created before. So material is good, thickness is perfect, depth is just marvelous. So I don't have to recreate the whole thing again and again. You just click on the countertop that I have already created. Okay, so far so good, but there's a couple of things we have to refine. First of all, we have to decide how high this countertop is going to be because it should be somewhere here. So we have to elevate it. 1,800 millimeters would do. And next thing we have to define its sizes. So the width is, should be 570. Thickness, well, as a second thought, maybe 40 millimeters is, is too, too thick. So let's just decrease it to 20. And not only do I need the left side, but I also need the right side panel like that. 900, I'm going to use it as it is. So I'm not going to change that. Another thing you have to define is, um, is this part over here. So I need to box it in like that. And the best position, best tool for that is the backsplash. So if I go to the wall strip or backsplash, and if I activate the back part, this is, this is created, but if I change it to a rectangular one and I over resize this rectangle, it's going to exactly cover this part over here, cover this hole. How do we do that? First, we go to this uh, Cogville icon and we remove the position of the reference line of this, because if once the reference line is kept here, then the backsplash is always going to add it to the top of this unit, but I want to move it to the top left corner because if I do, it's this element is going to be pushed inside. So that so far that's that's good. The width and height we have to change. The width should be five millimeters, and the height should be nine hundred and twenty millimeters. And when I do that, now the box is almost complete. Uh, one thing is is not good: the material that I have to change to something else. I can do that over here. Dark gray is no good. So if I click on this, uh, this bluish cross, I can look for the element. I, I think it was a walnut covering. Okay, I see that there are many, many versions of the same content. What is the difference between this one and that one? Difference seems to be an orange uh, triangle. The orange triangle means that this is a version of the, <clears throat> sorry, the original content that I have already used in this uh, in this model. So if I want to make sure that I use the same thing as I used before, I just click on the element that I have already used. So just click that and it is uh, recolored. So if I hit OK, then I ended up with a very nice boxed in version of this unit. So that is actually what I wanted. So I think my kitchen is getting together much better than my own, to be honest. Uh, one thing that is missing is a plinth. So this is a matter of debate. Some people like to have access to the bottom of the panels because then you can just mop under the panel, uh, under the cabinets. For me, I'm not that partial because when we have kids, then the tiny cars might be rolling under this thing. So you want to seal this off if you don't want to spend the rest of your life uh, fishing out things from under this unit. So I need to use a plinth. For that, I'm going to activate the 2D and I go back to the interior KBB and plinth units. Again, I have two choices. I either use a uh, the cabinet to act as guidelines or I use a profile. I'm going to use the profile now. And <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm just going to trace the route for this plinth. So it goes from here to, to there. Okay, if you don't want to, if you cannot hit that point, uh, snap to this point and then you can do it. So... Again, if you <clears throat> if you get lost with all these nodes, then this is how you can find the right nodes. So let's just push it all the way to the, I think to the other end because uh, the tall unit has legs as well. So hit enter. The software did create something, but I need to override. So what we do is that we go to the to its menu 
And first of all, I need to change the, um, I think the rectangle profile is good, but the sizes are no good. So I'm just going to say this is 20 millimeters, so two, two centimeters thick, and the height should be 100 millimeters. And uh, the material should be whitish. Some other thing what I'm not really uh, satisfied with is the profile itself. I think the reference line should be moved here because otherwise it's going to be half, in, half uh, outside and half pushed inside to this lab. So let's just make sure that we have another node selected. Okay, and okay. And now my plinth is marvelously created. So now my kitchen is starting a lot, li lot like a kitchen. Um, one thing what you could be customizing if you need it is where this plinth actually is. If you highlight the plinth, which is over here, uh, you can click on the the uh, the nodes and the sides and you can offset things back and forth. So if I want to offset it a bit backwards, maybe 50 millimeters, then you can do that like that. So you just hit offset and, and move it backwards. And there's some inaccuracy in my drawing to be honest I'm not sure if you have seen it because i was trying not to show you but i'm going to show you anyway because that just teaches you how to amend these things so you see this line is crooked so this is not good uh, the plinth when i was sketching it i made some kind of sketching error so how do i amend that i click on this node and i say i want to move it and i'm going to move here and that would give me a, uh, maybe I don't have that. So let me just do another way. So if I if I have this kind of things, one thing you could be doing, let's go to draw and draw a line from this point south. And by hitting the shift key, you can be sure that the line is going to be uh, straight. And now if I go back to the plinth, I can just move the node and snap it to the line. And now I can get rid of the line. And that way you ended up with a very neat uh, sort of straight edge and you don't have to worry about inaccuracies. I think that is that is a little bit better way to do things. Um, I think we are done with the kitchen. So what we can do is that we can turn back on the visibility of the kitchen elements. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, when I started with this project, I said this was an empty project. Uh, I might have lied a bit because this project has a bunch of elements which we have temporarily hidden. Let's go to the layer manager and see what I mean. So, uh, so if I go to the layers, I see that I have a bunch of layers which are turned off. That is because these layers are containing elements, a lot of them, which are decorational patterns or things that you don't actually need during your work. So if you have things like flowers or, or uh, salt shakers or things like that, you want to turn them off while you work. Otherwise, it's going to take too much time to visualize them. So let's just close this for a second and get introduced to something that we call a layer walk. Now, what the layer walk does is that it it, it is like a, a quick selector of what you want to show and what you want to hide on your floor plan. So if I, uh, for example, only want to show the electrical accessories, the furniture, uh, lighting and other things, then this is how you can do it. For instance, I only want to see the walls or, or the walls and the, and the slab, for example. But now I want to see everything, so I'm selecting everything, hit OK. Okay, the 2D is now littered with two-dimensional elements. And if I want to build a 3D representation from here, all I have to do, I hit the 3D hammer, and then the software in a second is going to build up the model back to its original state. It might take a little bit longer because it has a lot of elements in here. But while it loads, I can actually look at the questions that you have asked. So let's... Uh, oh, actually, it did, did load uh, instantly. So. This is how you can turn things back on and off again. You see that you have multiple elements you, which you don't need during your design stage. You don't need this bowl of oranges. You only need it at the end when you're visualizing things. And you don't need the salt shakers or the, or the breath holder. This is something that you can turn on and off. And I suggest you do because otherwise it's going to have a difficult time visualizing things. Now, let's just investigate page up and down to sort of take a look around. And eventually, uh, let's open up again the slides that I showed you in the beginning. So these are th these are uh, renders which were made with the built-in rendering engine of Arch and XP. So I'm not going to do rendering now because that's just going to be repetition of what I've already done. But this is how you can build up a very simple yet effective and beautiful and clean kitchen design and create cabinets like that. And uh, I think it's now time for the for the questions. So let's see what kind of questions do we have here. So here's one. 
Uh, I cannot get the, the blue lines when I uh, hover over an item. Um, the cursor settings look fine and I tried doing the factory settings reset uh, and there are no blue lines. So, okay, if you need the blue lines, uh, first of all, the, the blue lines, what we are talking about is this. If you hover over, over something, it's going to be highlighted with blue lines. This is an addition to Arshine XP 2020. So for late, for earlier version of, of Arshine, this is not available. This is something that we added this year. If you want to enable or disable these lines, you have to go to the, to the uh, property tab over here, go to um, cursor and marker, and uh, here it's the it's called the pre-selection. If you disable that, it's the blue selection lines are going to be gone. So again, this is an addition to Arch and XP 2020. If you don't have that, maybe uh, you don't have the latest version. Um, another question, when you initially brought in the first kitchen cabinet, can this not be copied as an array as opposed to placing multiple copies? Uh, my colleague uh, nicely added an, an answer to this. Uh, you can enable and disable the, oh yeah, sorry, that was another one. Um, you can select any existing drawing item and start the edit duplicate array command. Uh, let me just show you real quick. So if you have a cabinet, let's let's go back here and use the base cabinet like that. So let's say I want to, I want to have one cabinet over there and I want to duplicate it. You can use it with the, you can duplicate it with the edit, uh, duplicate uh, array tool, and you say that I want to have, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, two copies, and you just click a point, and you just array them like that. So you can do that, of course. Uh, it depends on which one is more convenient to you. The way I like to work is that I like to pre-visualize things. So I like to start by, by giving the plan a sense of mass. So it doesn't matter what kind of cabinets you're putting down, but make sure it has the right sizes because then you have an understanding of how your how your finished kitchen would look like. That's why I started with a base cabinet, which then I, I divided into, into drawers because it's better to start with something with mass and substance and then uh, sort of finalizing them. Uh, another question, can you have a shortcut to open, close doors and uh, drawers? Uh, yeah, let's just uh, let's just look at the, the answer here. You can define the shortcut to any of the available comments. Uh, if you're sp in this case, um, let's find the interior uh, KBB and it should be here. I've never used this actually. So uh, it should be three representation of cabinets, uh, totally open doors. Now right click and say keyboard shortcut. And here you can find something to sort of stand in for that shortcut. Uh, should be Control Shift uh, O maybe. Yeah, that's the one. So it should be Control Shift O and hit OK. And if I now use this, sorry, Control Shift O, then the cabinet should be opening any second now. It has a lot of them, so yeah, so that's how you do it. It's a very good way to show how your drawing looks like. I, I don't know if I if this would close them back on because for that you need to use another tool. So if you want to toggle it back and forth, then make sure you, you shortcut the closed door as well. So I'm just going to undo this now. Uh, yeah. Uh, next question. Mm how can a kitchen manufacturer create their own catalog of, ki uh, of kitchen cabinets, textures, and parts with BIM information? Uh, just the same way as I did in the beginning. So when I was creating a, a cabinet, if I go to uh, interior KBB cabinet, then here when you are saving, so first you set it up to look at the way you need it and load up the, the right textures. And then you save it with the manufacturer's name and subcategory and producer here you can define that and beam parameters can be added here so here here's how you a manu, here's how a manufacturer can save his or her own library i hope that was an answer to the to the question uh, why is the floor not visible in the 2d plan uh you mean the tiles well if you want to visualize so this is um, a setting in the 2d so by default we are not visualizing the uh, let me just close these things back on because they're going to do a lot of unnecessary rendering. So I just do it like that and get rid of this extra cabinet. Uh, last time when I was doing a, a presentation of on tiles, I did a um, sort of presentation on how to visualize the, the tiles on the ground. So what you need to do, you select the, um, the um, what is the name? The slab, yeah, that, 
obviously it's a, it's a slab. So um, select the slab, right click, say uh, um, tiling on the layout, I think, and then you ended up with uh, with this. So let me just find the right node to node two. If you don't find the right node, just hit F5, and then another node would be selected like that. It's still not good, so let me just find. Uh, yeah, this is. Here you go. So that's how you can do it if you want to visualize the tiles. But then another thing you have to fight with is the drawing order. And then you would need to select elements and make sure they are above the tiles. So you could visualize the tiles like that, or there's another way to do it. And that is called a uh, snapshot. Let me just go there. Uh, this is something that I wanted to discuss later on, but if this is asked over here, then this is where we are talking about it. Documentation snapshot, create or delete a floor snapshot. If you do that, you define the cutting elevation, which I think now 1,500 is good. And now the software is going to create a textured image of the the tiling layout and the documentation that you have. I mean, not the documentation, of course, but the elements that you have. If you click on the image, you can move it somewhere else. So that way you can visualize how your drawing is starting to take shape. So I hope that was a, an answer to the question. Um, does the plinth, another question, does the plinth beneath the kitchen sink run through the tiles? It depends how you set it up, of course. Um, I'm pretty sure that maybe I made a mistake and it's now running through it. Uh, let me just highlight it and, and see. I think uh, this is now pushed a little bit into the tiles, but this you can compensate by clicking on the uh, the, um, the pencil icon and, and change the sizes over there. So if you want to offset things, then you just Click on the element and uh, maybe use the movement markers, change the base elevation, elevate it, maybe with five millimeters if you want, and then you can make sure that it's not going to be uh, pushed into the tile. So see, I pushed it even further up because now, now there's a tiny gap, but you get the idea. Um, yeah, I think that was, uh, that was all the questions that were asked. I'm very happy for the questions. They are, again, very relevant and keeping the, the content even more interesting. So that is what we wanted to discuss tomorrow. We are going to carry on with the uh, documentation. I already hinted at these things uh, a few times now. Um, I already told you that the benefit, the major benefit of working with actual tiles is that you can get a quantity takeoff for the tiles. And I also told you that if you want to use cabinets, the major benefit is that these cabinets would have manufactured data and sizes. Tomorrow we are looking at how to get these data out in a manageable format. I'm mainly talking about uh, Excel lists, schedules, tags, and uh, layouts, maybe even mood boards, because we are talking about interior design, so you need to know how to create uh, mood boards as well. So tomorrow is all about documentation. We are going to look at how to get your modeled things out in a presentable format. And um, as a thank you for staying all the way to the, to the end, I have a tiny surprise for you. I asked one of my colleagues to push this model that we just worked on into Archon XP Live, which is our architectural visualization software. And she made me a, a couple of uh, images to illustrate the rendered results that you can achieve with Archon XP Live. So Archon XP Live is all about visualizing your spaces without, uh, without render time. So whenever you are creating something, the result would be done instantly and you would be able to work with high quality uh, textures and high quality objects as well. Not to mention that everything you set up in ArchLine, the dimensions, the sizes, the render styles, etc., the material settings will be exported into ArchLine XP Live. So you don't have to work on things twice. So you could be using ArchLine's own integrated rendering engine. And as an enhancement, you could also use ArchLine XP Live. But, you know, Live is all about movement, which cannot be shown with these static images that well. So I deck up another project that were made by one of our clients and uh, we turn that into a video. So this is what I'm uh, I'm um, showing you last. This is what our thank you gift for staying all around. This is a video made with Ocean XP Live based on a project that was made by one of our users. For um, once again, we are thankful for this project that he sent to us. This is where Live is actually getting its edge with the lights, with the movement, with the uh, with the lights flickering in the back, with uh, human figures walking back and forth. So this is where Live is really getting more interesting. So. If you ever try, haven't tried live, uh, I suggest you go for a trial version from our website. 
And uh, again, just a quick reminder, if you ever want to get a trial version of Rshine or any other solutions that we have, visit our website and here you can download the, the trial version uh, of Rshine and live as well. So for now, I would like to uh, thank you for your attention and, uh, and uh, see you tomorrow when we are going to talk about um, documentation and other amazing and interesting things. So again, thanks for your attention. See you tomorrow.